Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Our first break today is gonna be a long one here. 2024 Bowman Baseball Hobby Doubleheader. 24 total boxes, pick your team, five. All card ship. Uh, there'll be 24 autographs, one per box. A lot of great stuff here. Big thanks to everybody who filled this up. Appreciate you getting here in on a, uh, on a Monday, on a Monster Monday. I feel like we have not seen Super Fractors, right? If you're watching live, sorry for the delay. We're trying to get this printer fixed. I need a printer, but... Kind of got into the weeds on it and then... But appreciate your patience. This will be a few hours. I think it's about an hour and a half a case. So this will take us uh, a little while, but I don't think anything was in danger of selling out. So if you don't have a stake in this break, we'll see you in a few hours. If you do and you're watching live, you're stuck with me. If you're re-watching the replay of this, there'll be a recap at the end of this video. Good luck, everyone. Not sure why. I feel like the printer industry should be a lot easier to, uh, to install any printer. I should just be able to plug it in and it should either be detected wirelessly or I could plug it directly into the computer and, uh, and it should just work. No, there are drivers I have to install. I have to install Canon or, or Hewlett Packard HP's like printer, like utility device. Download that program to detect this program. What a hassle. And if one setting is off, then it's just, then it's just a, it's a, just a nightmare. Nothing's printing, you're downloading drivers, you're trying to install them. Is the wireless on? Is it off? That, I had the, one of the printers told me that we were on a 5G band or a 5 gigahertz band. We needed to be on a 2.4 gigahertz band because there were some security issues with the 5 gigahertz band. Can't put a printer on that, at least not that one. We're changing those settings. And then there's the toner scam. The toner scam, it's not like I'm thumbs with technology, I'm, but I guess with printers, I guess, who, I guess I don't really use printers as often anymore, so, or at least at home, so I'm not fiddling with that, but, but then there's the toner scam. They're telling you you're out of toner when you're clearly printing stuff. They want you to buy more toner. I mean, it should, it should be just a simple device. It should be, I feel like it's a lot more complicated than it should be. Um, I think the key prospects that we're looking at are still the same. Aiden Miller for the Phillies, Arjun Namala for the Blue Jays, Brock Wilkin for the Brewers. Um, we've got this whole list right here. Dylan Cruz, Nationals, Yandy Morales, Nationals, uh, Greg Lombard Jr., Yankees, Kyle Teal, Red Sox, Luis Baez, Astros, Walker Jenkins, Twins. The only two rookies that we're uh, pulling and sleeping and top loading right away are uh, Ellie De La Cruz for the Reds and Yamamoto, Yoshinobu Yamamoto for the Dodgers. But anyhow, that, that was the, and then once I, and I apologize for the delay again, because once like, I kind of got in the weeds on it, then, you know, I, I was just like, in this mode where I have to fix it, and. So these guys will sleeve and top load, but just in the interest of time, I'm just gonna set those aside. We're gonna do that uh, after the break, or maybe I'll have the sorting and shipping team do it. Like numbered card and stuff, I'll take care of right away. There's Clayton Kershaw, pink paper to 2.99. Brian H with the Dodgers. Brian saying, you, I was asking before the break, have I pulled a super fractor? Brian says, yeah, possibly pulled it. it. Might have been Jason. It was a super of Mason Wynn, Rising Infernos, but nothing like just a base super fractor let alone a Super Factor Auto. I don't think we've even done that, so. Let's hope for something like that. 
Devers, Joe Lawson, Raphael Devers had a new Red Sox record, one home run in six straight games. Wow. Spencer Jones, Green, Lunar, those are not numbered, so we'll sweep by those. There's a Yandy Morales for Sean Maddock and the Nats. Carson Wisenhunt, uh, Mini Diamonds. That is not numbered. I think the autos, Mini Diamond autos are numbered, but obviously all card ship, you'll be getting everything. It's Kyle Teal for Boston. Bob has Boston. There's a paper Dylan Cruz for Sean Maddock. And there's a Brian Acuna, Ronald's brother, Lunar to 125. Joe Cavanaugh with the, uh, with the Braves. There's a prospect power up, Aiden Miller. Dylan Cruz Chrome. All those Aiden Millers will go to Darren L and the Phillies. There's Yamamoto, rookie paper. Brock Wilkin for the Brewers. That's all those gonna be for Jeremy Olson. Ellie Dela Cruz. Saw a little bit of a. Uh, there's uh, Ellie Dela Cruz will go to Sean and the Reds. Baez's will go to Evan and the Astros. James Wood might get called up soon, the way he's hitting in the minors. Um, the Dodgers are playing the Reds over the weekend or not too long ago. But uh, Ellie Dela Cruz is the real deal. Nice, that's, uh, that's the case hit popping already. That's uh, Henry Davis. And the anime design going to Tristan and the Pirates. It's generally fall one per case. Let's set these right over here. And there's our auto, that's Alfonso Rosario. That will be for the Cubbies, that's gonna go to Mark. Brock Wilkin for the Brewers. That'll be for Jeremy. And obviously, there's a good chance I'll miss some of those key prospects that we're sleeping and top loading right away. Well, obviously, uh, sorting and shipping team will be on the lookout for those as well. Um, if you want to vote, we have a poll going on here on uh, on Twitter. If you go to our Twitter or X account that's pinned in the chat, if you click that link, it'll take you right to the poll. Who's going to win the Eastern Conference Final? That doesn't. So the Western Conference Final starts on Wednesday. The Eastern Conference Final starts tomorrow. I think Boston is the uh, is the big favorite, but if you want to. If you want to place your vote, let me know. The people are split 50-50. Acuna was the twins. What did I say? I was just making sure you were paying attention, cultured investor. You passed the test. Thankfully, it doesn't matter what I say on video. The sorting and shipping team will go by the card, not by me. Jesse has the twins, by the way. You'll get that Brian Acuna. Oh, I said Braves. Um, I was just making sure you were paying attention. 
Uh, where's his brother, by the way? I think Luis. Luis Acuna? Luis Angel Acuna? Was with the Rangers, I want to say, but I think he's on the Mets now. It's on the Mets now. It's a blast. It'll take me a cool three hours. Kevin, you have Cleveland, so if you're naming this break, might have to go get a Mega Millions ticket. What's Mega Millions at now? I did, Jonathan. Uh, $60, I think. $59.99, I want to say. Somewhere around there. All right, box two of 24. We just got started, so settle in, hang out. It's a long break, so feel free to keep me company if you'd like. Otherwise, I'll, sure, I'll figure out a way to entertain myself throughout this break. There's Masataka Yoshida to $3.99, green paper. For Boston, again, that'll be for Bob in Boston. Mega Millions is at $4.21. That's kind of when I start thinking. The three, four, five hundred range is where I'm thinking, that maybe I should start, even though my odds are a little bit longer, but they're gonna be long all the time, right, so. Not greedy though. Uh, if I just win, I think there is a way you can just win a cool million dollars, I want to say. Right? If you match, like, well, that was Aiden Miller, there he is. It's going to go to Darren and the Phillies. Um, right? I think if you just match, like, five numbers, but without the, the mega number or whatever, like, you'll still get a million bucks. Here's Jacob Gonzalez, yellow lunar to uh, 19 out of 75. That'll be for the White Sox. That's going to go to Gary, the White Sox. There's a purple lunar to 199. That's David Guzman. That's for Toronto. It's going to be for Tristan in Toronto. Right. You can afford to buy, yeah, the Nats in this Bowman stuff. Hell, you'll be... I mean, at that point, Kevin, you're you're not buying individual teams, right? I mean, maybe just to support Jaspies, you would, of course. But, I mean, you would also be buying your own cases just outright at that point. Multiple cases. There's Yamamoto for the Dodgers. That's Brian H. with my Dodgers. And heroes, Alfred, Al Alfredo Duno, number 97 out of 100 on the big list there, the top 100. That's going to be for Sean Maddock and the Reds. That'd be a good story. Two years later, guy who blew the lottery on baseball cards. George Lombard Jr., all of these will go to Bill and the Yankees. Including any that I may have missed here. There's Brock Wilkin, prospect power up. Jace Young, Josh's brother. There's Arjun Nimala for the Blue Jays, Tristan. There's Troy Blanco Jr. Mini Diamonds. There's 
It's Walker Jenkins for the Twins. That's going to go to Jesse. George Lombard Jr. again for Bill and the Yankees. There's Luis Angel Cunha, Mets. There he is. I was wondering about that. All right, next box. Kyle Manzardo, top 100 auto in this. Nice. J Ram parallel would be nice as well. Baseball day. I feel like it should be a light day today, right? Monday, usually sort of a pseudo travel day. Uh, Blue Jays beat the White Sox 9 3. Danny Jansen had a two run shot here. A double header. Padres in the first game beat the Braves 6 5. I guess there was a three run, there's a little rally there, three run eighth for the Padres. Got him past the Braves. Braves bullpen. Sneaky, not good. I think that's their, that's their one little flaw on that team. But yeah, their, their, their bullpen has, has just still trying to figure things out there. So that's something to keep an eye on as the season goes on. At the end of the seventh, Guardians are leading the Mets three to one. In the second game of the doubleheader, Braves are leading the Padres three nothing. Bottom of the sixth, Brewers are shutting out the Marlins in Miami two to nothing. Bottom of the fifth, Nats are leading the Twins six one. End of the fifth, Red Sox are shutting out the Rays in Tampa Bay five nothing. Red Sox usually struggle in Tampa Bay, so they're changing that narrative. Rays are getting one hit right now. Yankees shutting out the Mariners 2-0 just in the end of the fourth. In Kansas City, Tigers are trailing the Royals 0-1. Uh, uh, top of the second, this game just started. Orioles, Cardinals, bird on bird action, scoreless. And the late game, Angels, Astros will be playing in about... Angels at Astros playing in about five minutes or so. And uh, the Diamondbacks are here in L.A. playing the Dodgers in, uh, in a couple hours. Yeah, I was talking Red Dodgers. You were there. You went Saturday night rooting for the Dodgers. I see L.A. And then he went over for 4. Right, like previous games, he was like, there was one game against the Dodgers that same weekend. Here's uh, Xavier Isaac to 150. For the Rays, um, he went like three for three, a walk, and like four stolen bases. There's Xavier Isaac going to the Rays. That'll be for Alex. I saw one at bat. Yeah, that was Thursday, right? I think I was I was here. I was definitely here, watching the game with you guys. Stole. I saw a play where and at bat where he got on base, stole second, stole third. P. Crow Armstrong, $14.99, purple paisley, bandana, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I mean, I feel like he came onto the scene hot last year, you know, and everyone was excited about his rookie cards the following year. And then he cooled off, like greatly, the remainder of the year. So I think people were kind of Kind of like, ah, oh, is he not going to be good for the hobby? But no, now he's, uh, I feel like he's, he's back to what we think, what we thought he would be. They, they are who we thought they were. But yeah, a walk could be definitely a double. And, and in some cases, Ellie De La Cruz can turn a walk into a triple. 
A base hit into a triple. It's crazy. Dylan Cruz. When people talk about like hitters, they're on pace for X amount of home runs and stuff like that. A lot of times those on pace numbers, there's Jet Williams 299. A lot of times those on pace numbers are rarely sustainable. You know, just because there's so much, so many variables that come into to, to hitting and pitching. But that's, that's less the case about stolen bases because speed is always going to be there. It's just a matter of that person, that player getting on base. But if that player can get on base, you know, at a decent number of times. I mean, we've seen, there, there he is right there. I mean, we've seen players hitting 200. Right, who could steal? Who can still steal a boatload of bases? There's Noah Schultz. I think it was like a lavender pattern in the background, but just not numbered. But like, you can almost believe it with with Ellie De La Cruz that whatever that on pace number is for stolen bases, like I think he can get it. Or the only. You know, only some sort of lower body injury would probably slow him down. That's the only way to slow him down. But if, if that's relatively healthy, even if he slumps, he could probably still get on base somehow with walks or something like that. And even if you're hitting 200, let's say your on base percentage is not very good. Even if your on base percentage is not very good, you can still take every single one of those plate appearances and turn that into a steal, you can still get a lot. Here's Diego Benitez for Joe Cavanaugh and the Braves. Jalen, what's up? Is the football makes sold. Does the spot giveaway finish it or are there more spots? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Usually when we get to the last sort of giveaway break, we usually put last filler on there, but... I'll check in a couple hours. This break is going to take a little while, so we're not, we won't even get to it until then anyway. If it doesn't say last filler, my guess is that there's still one or two more to go. But yeah. I don't think it says last fill on it, so my, my, my guess is that we probably have at least two or three more of those fillers that we have to do to officially fill out the mixer. So Kevin's saying he was on pace for 110 or something. That's not crazy. Got to hand it to Major League Baseball. They did, the tweaks that they did make, sometimes like in the NFL, um, yeah, no problem, Jim. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, they'll, they'll make rule changes and then they're changing them right back the next year or you're wondering why they even make this rule change. Sometimes it just seems like a rule change for the sake of making a rule change under the guise of player safety or whatever. I don't know. So many rules in the NFL, a lot, a lot of tinkering. But I think, I think the moves that... You know, the moves that the, or the rule changes that Major League Baseball made, I feel like weren't bad. That'd make the bases a little bit bigger. You know, the pickoff rules, you know, giving people more chances to steal. You know, the shift rule. A little more action on the base pads because of the shift rule. So... And so and ultimately that sped up the game, pitch clock, you know, getting rid of the four pitch intentional walk. I feel like they kind of shaved, shaved the fat and kind of dropped it to, yeah, you may, that's the one thing I don't think works, right?
Yeah, I mean, at least one of those fillers might fill. I should probably have this break done, I don't know, it'll be a little while. I think each of these hobby cases will be over an hour. But if you keep an eye on the schedule, Jalen, you'll be able to see about when the next break could probably happen. But yeah, I think maybe, Kevin, that's the one rule where I think they did drop the ball a little bit. Retaining that runner on second. There's 59 out of 150. That's uh, Abby Melick Ortiz. That's going to go to the Rangers. It's for Joe Lawson, the Ray Wave. Does it actually, I wonder, it doesn't feel like it, but I wonder if someone has the proper numbers on it. There's Tony Ruiz. Does that actually make extra innings shorter and go longer or and, and make the uh, make extra innings meaning are there less extra innings does it actually make the game shorter because sometimes I feel like it's just makes makes it easier for each team to to um, to score a run and the next team scores a run the next team, you know, next half inning score run, maybe it takes just as long. I don't know. I'd be curious to see what the actual numbers are. Jacob Bird, remember those mini diamonds are not numbered, so that's why I'm kind of breezing by those. Those green lunars are not numbered as well. Colin Hawk, 118 out of 150, blue ray wave, going to I, Coppola, and the Mets. I'm going to slide these two boxes on top of my nice stack over there, just need a little room. I get, um, I guess I'm rare in that, I don't mind a five hours. No, I don't mind that either, everyone loves a little bonus baseball. I don't know if that, if that runner on second actually makes a difference in shortening the game or not. Maybe it does, I don't know. But I do like the idea of, uh, I do like the idea of, sometimes you gotta give it the possibility of like a, 16, 17 inning game. I kind of want to see that. Gladiators of the Diamond. I think those are somewhat short printed as well. And look at that. Two out of 18, a Ryan Sandberg autograph. That's pretty awesome. That's going to be for Mark and the Cubs. Nice. So this is uh, this is from 1990. 1990 Bowman baseball buyback, gold stamped, numbered as well. And there's your blue ink auto right on the front. That's really awesome. I don't think I've seen one of these yet, these buyback autographs. And that's going to be, for once again, for Mark and the Cubs. That's really cool.
And the Gladiators of the Diamond, George Lombard, of course, will go to the Yankees. That'll be for Bill. I don't know if I'll have any of the choice break. No, I don't think we're going to have any more choice. At least not, not, not now. All right, next box. Kevin's saying there's only 13 players with those buybacks. That's pretty cool. Are those players, do you know offhand, Kevin, if all those players are of the caliber of Ryan Sandberg, or are there some like random, random people in, in the mix? That's the first one I think I've seen. It's a really cool, cool looking card. At first I thought it was just a facsimile autograph, and I was like, well, no way. It's a proper auto. Pujols, Alex Rodriguez, Trevor Jones, Dennis Eckersley, George Rett, Paul Molitor, Pedro Martinez, Rod Carew, Roger Clemens, Ryan Sandberg, Scott Rowland, Tom Glavin, Trevor Hoffman. Wow. That's quite a list. Are those, is that, is that all Hall of Famers on that list? That's a nice, uh, that's a nice group. Trevor Jones one would be, any one of those guys would be really cool. That's a good question. We're, we're into the conference finals. Who do I think is going to be in the NBA finals? Got the sounds of uh, some WNBA action on the background. A lot of Caitlin Clark. A uh, lot of turnovers for Caitlin Clark. I've been kind of half paying attention to what's going on here, but I feel like those turnovers are going to be something that she needs to cut down in, in the very, very, very early part of her career. You got to think the Celtics take the East, you know, no disrespect to the uh, to the Pacers, but they've had a very nice season, nice postseason, but you know, you kind of, if you look at the, I feel like a full strength Knicks team, if they had like Julius Randle, a couple others, you know, I feel like they would they would have been, they would have not have been the ones moving on. They got some good pieces on that Pacers team, though. But I think it's ultimately it has to be the Celtics. And um, there's Filippo de Turi to 399. I, th I think that that uh, Timberwolves Mavericks series. We were talking a little bit about that earlier today. I think that's a coin flip. I think that's going seven games. It's for the Brewers. It's going to go to Jeremy. But I think I know. Yeah, I think I, I know you're a Mavs guy, Brian. But you know the old cliche often rings true: defense wins championships. And the Timberwolves have got that. I think this year might be the best year the Timberwolves might have. 
right? Where, especially while the defense is clicking, is to win, to win a title, let alone just make it to the finals. And then, of course, this will be a big test for the Celtics. I think if if they meet, well, if the big test for the Celtics, if they make it to the finals, you know, can that crew, can Jason Tatum, can he win a championship for? for Boston in this window. Joe Lawson has Celtics Mavs and Celtics win. There's Herman Ramirez. It's going to go to Evan and the Strohs. Yeah, Celtics has got to be in for sure. I feel like if it's Celtics Mavs, I think it would be I think it would be Celtics. If it's Celtics Timberwolves, I don't know. If that defense can keep it up all, keep it going all week in a finals, it could be the Timberwolves. Yeah, they've got that resiliency. Timberwolves can come back from, from deep de deficits, which is not necessarily a good thing. There's Ramirez again, nice orange shimmer, 12 out of 25. You got the auto, you got a parallel. Nice, Evan. But they, they've, not that you want to be down like that, but they have been in that position before. So I don't think they get too rattled if, they, uh, if they're down a lot of points. I think the other big thing is, I feel like uh, Mike Conley needs to stay healthy if the, if the Timberwolves want to have success. Because we've seen them, what, what they look like without Mike Conley and with Mike Conley, and I feel like they've admitted as much, if I remember correctly from just interviews and stuff like that, they've admitted as much, hey, we, we struggle without Mike Conley. He's a calming presence on that, uh, on that squad. Is Caitlin Clark still out, or did she come back? She came back. She's a warrior. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is, what, is this the flu game already? <laughs> this will be her flu game? Like the third game of the WNBA season. Have you pulled any Dylan Coops yet? Autographs? Yeah. No. I think only Jason's pulled a base and that's it. That's it? Or no, Teddy pulled one of like the insert ones, but it's, a well, it's time for a time for a super cracker auto. I think that's it. Oh, All time for the out of five, the red auto. All five of them. <laughs> All five of them are time for the the whatever the ten is, out of ten auto. If they have any. I don't think so. Maybe it jumps to twenty five. Maybe time for us to pull the orange, uh, the or orange Dylan Cruz auto. Uh, all 26 of the orange is on the Damn. It's time to pull the out of 50 gold autos. Uh, they actually have pulled 52 of those. Okay, time to pull the yellow out of 75 Dylan Cruz. Yeah, he didn't sign the yellow ones. Didn't sign the yellow ones. Time to pull the... Green. Oh, green out of 99. Yeah, but green is the least desirable. I don't know that. <laughs> it's time to pull the... Purple out of 250. That's the second least What about the blue out of 150? Blue lunar to 150. Just pull a refractor, okay? What, what about a... Uh, what about a Bowman Scott Top 100? Number two out of 100. Man. Auto. No, no one likes that either. I can't believe we haven't pulled that many Dylan Cruz autographs. That's crazy. Must be really short for me. Now, as a Laker, of course, as a Laker fan, I personally do not want to see the Celtics win a championship. For the hobby, it'd be good for Jason Tatum to knock one out. But as a Lakers fan, I, I don't want. To, I do not want to see that. If the Mavs get past Minnesota, Brian thinks, they beat whoever makes it to the finals. That's generally, I feel like going into the season, you know, you would, you generally would think that, that whoever comes out of the West 
it's like football. It's like the NFL, where it's like you would think that the AFC team, whatever AFC team makes it to the Super Bowl, will probably be ooh a one of one. Any AFC team will most likely be favored than the NFC team. I feel like any Western Conference team will be favored over any Eastern Conference team. Here's Justin Verlander, Astros printing plate, one of one. Evan, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. It's a good spot for him to autograph right there. Gilo, what's going on, Gabe? Gabe, of course, a proud, proud Chiefs fan. You know, he... Big supporter of the Chiefs. And all of their, and all of their players. And their off-season actions. Big fan of them. Are you about to play in the Champions League final in FIFA? No big deal. Who's your? Who are you playing with? Who, who's your? Who's your squad? And who are you playing against? And here's Quinn Priester, rookie auto, three fifty four out of four ninety nine. Pirates, that's going to be for Tristan. Playing as Man City against Real Madrid. I think that's what RMA stands for. Uh, I feel like Man City wishes they would be in a Champions League final against, against Real Madrid. I feel like as many titles they have won, I feel like they would trade a couple of those titles for a couple more Champions League victories. Meanwhile, my club, Liverpool, would almost be the opposite. We might give up a Champions League for a league, a league title. There's uh, Ty Pete to 399, Lava. For the Mariners, that'll be for Steve. Hey, there's Evan. You're welcome. Yeah, for those of you who don't want to be intentionally delayed a little bit, but make sure always double check to make sure you're at the live point of the stream. There's Robert Collaz, 001 out of 125, the first one ever printed. More Kyle Teals for Boston. Robert will go to the Rockies. That's going to be for, for Mark. Am I ever burned out on Bowman? Um, no. It's a lot of cards, obviously, but I think there's just so many, I don't know, I like the prospecting angle of it, so I don't mind trying hunting for all of these prospects. I think I do get burnt out on like NFL like players like seeing the same players over and again over like by the time the next NFL draft rolls around 
I always feel like that's like a, in the basketball too, I think. I think that's always kind of like the right time, at least for me, where I'm just like, yeah, I could, I'm interested in looking for some new faces in upcoming product. I like to see who these new faces are gonna be. Bowman, I feel like it, it's rare that we are able to get after our initial, you know, uh, after our initial run that we order, and maybe a little bit after that if we, if we can get some at a decent price. But initially, after after that run, we really don't see them see these kind of products again, just because the price goes up on these so quickly, and you know, obviously, you know, people. There's so much future value in here that the price stays up on these things until until these guys you know start matriculating to the to the majors and then we see if they're act, they're legit players or not but I feel like until then these prices get pretty pretty big and obviously and every draft class I feel like almost has one or two players that everyone still wants to chase five years later, 10 years later. So I kind of enjoy it while, I know it's a lot of cards, but I think we kind of enjoy it while we can because who knows when we'll see 2024 stuff. So after our kind of run of this, it's like it's, like it's rare we'll see these regu this regularly again. Which is why we make such a big deal about, hey, pick your team, pre-order your teams. Because after our first set of cases, if we get any more, it's going to be usually more. Uh, it's going to cost more for everybody. So the best price is usually the, the initial handful of cases. I suppose that goes for most new releases, but Bowman especially. And then I don't know if we'll ever see a lot of this stuff again. Or even at, at this price anyway. A show Otani to 175. Nice pink paper. Had his first official walk off hit as a Dodger the other day, yesterday. This will be for Brian H. and my Dodgers. Right, yeah, it's hard to keep. Yeah, it's hard to keep up on these guys too, unless you're just a real baseball junkie and you're just tracking these guys from season to season. But yeah, that's why I say, even for the players that, you know, how we have like the we have the key player list, you know, where we keep track of all those guys like Arjun Namala. But really, you, you never know. It's, even if you have the cheapest team in this break, it's probably worth just tossing them in a the back of a drawer or in a, in a marked container saying 2024 Bowman or something like that and put some names on the front of it and then see, see if that player becomes anybody later on because there could be some late bloomers. There's Alberto Rios to 250, Purple Ray Wave. Or, you know, the people that we didn't think were going to be... It goes the other way, too. The people we think are going to be the stars don't end up being stars. You know, but that's the fun of this product. Because, you know, I mean, who knows? Maybe David Guzman ends up being, like, the big chase a few years from now. Like, that's how it could turn out to be. I mean, I, we just passed by a uh, an, a uh, Volpe. I remember his draft class, which wasn't too long ago, I think. Where whatever Bowman or Bowman draft product he was in, I don't think he was he was an afterthought really. I feel like there was another. Was he with the Was he in the Jason Dominguez class? He was in someone's Yankees, same as 
I don't know. I feel like there was another Yankee that was more desirable than Anthony Volpe when his Bowman or Bowman draft stuff was out. I forget which one, but one of those two. There's Brooks uh, Brannon to 25, Orange Shimmer. And there is Anthony Skull for uh, Joe Loss and the Angels. Last spot mojo. Strikes again. Number 30 on the Angels prospect list, according to MLB. But now I feel like Anthony Volpe is like a more desirable rookie to chase. So there's always there's always examples like that. Brooks Brandon, Orange Shimmer will go to Bob and the Red Sox. Yeah, so even if you end up with like a quote unquote cheap team in this, just hold on to it, see what happens. Because right now you might be like, oh, that's only worth like a dollar right now. And who knows, maybe in three or four years, it'll still be a dollar. But you want to hold on to it in case it becomes many X the times of that dollar later on. A couple good minor league seasons here and there and and then, uh, you know, that can increase the value significantly. Keep it going, another box. So we're into this, this is, uh, I think we're halfway through now. We have, this is one, two, three, four, five, yeah. It's a little over halfway. Are the paper cards on the first really worth keeping? Um. In my opinion, no, but I feel like these days, we used to not ship paper at all, like uh, two or three years ago, including uh, Bowman First paper. But as time went on, I feel like there was, a, there was an increase in people who, who wanted the paper. Which is fine. I think more and more people are grading like Bowman first paper and stuff. Yeah, you've been tossing yours, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just it depends. Some people get really, you know, really want the paper, and more and more people really, really want the paper. So I think it's it's just been easier for us to ship everything like we're doing with this break. But um, but uh, you should uh, yeah, that's usually what. Uh, you know, if you want to be a little more efficient in your collecting, yeah, that's probably what you should do. Just low numbered cards, chrome first, maybe. But you want numbered chrome cards and autos. You should donate those cards, Brian. Donate them to like a local boys and girls club, or you shouldn't just toss them. I see a lot of people use Bowman paper as um, as like as like extra filler cards when they're shipping stuff, when they're sh shipping other stuff. You know, or you can donate them to a local card shop or something like that. You love when some breakers act like scouts telling me how good their exit veal and spin rate is. <laughs> I 
You know what, Gilo? If you if you feel like stirring the pot, you can you can always uh, you can always hit him with the. So, what would your your forty to eighty scouting grade be on his fastball, <laughs> or on his uh, his uh, his raw power? Like, I mean, I don't know. Exit Velo is one thing, but that's that's like, I feel like Exit Velo is just empty calories. It's just, uh, oh, there you go, Brian. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's just empty calories. It's like, how, what, does that, what does that even mean to me? His Exit Velo is worth nothing if, like, his strikeout rate's like 40% in the minors. You know, if he can't hit breaking balls, you know, like. There's Alfredo Duno to 175. Pink paper for the red, Sean Maddock. But if they're really scouts, you know, then they'll be able to identify all the different, they'll know what the five tools are and they can grade them on a 40 to 80 scouting scale. Then I'll be impressed. Not that I would even know how to interpret any of that, but you know, if you're going to be a wannabe scout, you may as well do it right. But like, that's like saying, like, that's, Gilo, saying that someone has a great exit velo is like the same as saying, uh, this pitcher throws 102 miles per hour. What does that even mean, right? If you're just like, oh man, Quinn Priester, guy th throws an easy 102. What are his secondary pitches? You know, is it 102 with movement? Is it a straight 102? <laughs> if it's a straight 102, any, any major league hitter can time that up. There's Walker Martin, 206 out of 499. What are his secondary pitches? You need at least three, right? If you're gonna be a starter, otherwise you're just a closer. But like, there's Elijah Green, 007 out of 150, Ray Wave. Context is so important in baseball. But there's a lot of like empty stats that are, that are out there. I think it was like Rex the other day. It was like, yeah, Pete Crow Armstrong went from first to home in 11.3 seconds or something like that. And I was like, is that good? <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, is that good or bad? I mean, it seems like it's fast, I guess, but like, like the broadcast need to tell you the context, doesn't, you know, you need to be like, uh, hey, the average player running from first to home should be the, and I don't know if that's like even info that's regularly available. If, you know, some people are like, well, just Google it, but I don't know, Google someone's the Major League Baseball average time from first to home and tell me tell me if uh, su such and such player is fast or not around there. All right, Brian, sounds good. I'll try. If I do, I'll have a little card, I'll have a card stand here. I'll be sure to display that with this little card stand. If you don't see that, then you know that a super was not pulled. Rex was here earlier. 
but I did not get any rec stats from him. You figured out where the autos are in Javi? Like what pack they are in every box? Bottom left stack. Right, this stack right here. Wait, so where, where, would, where would that be? I don't know, I, I pull the packs out differently, I think, every time. So where would they, what, what would that be in, in the box when I open it? So if I take them out backwards, that would be the top right. I mean, I might have pulled the packs out a little differently, but... Walker Jenkins and Morales. Oh, bottom left, I see. We'll, we'll test that. Next box. Camilo Diaz, paper, 260 out of 499. Astros, that'll be for Evan. And there's the auto, J.D. Gonzalez. Hmm. That'll be for the Padres, Jonathan. Third round pick. Kyle Teal to 199, Purple Lunar, and Kyle Teal Paper. Both of those will be for Bob in Boston. Jim Cruz, Aiden Miller. And gets a technical.
Bryce Harper to 499 paper. It's for the Phillies. It's gonna be for Darren. Kaylin Clark yelled in the ref's face, that's not an effing foul, but she said the F word straight up. Uh, can't do that. Especially when it is a foul because I think there are transition foul, take fouls or whatever they called it when they're in transition, that foul is a foul in the WNBA. Not in the, uh, not in college. Which you should know by now. A lot of turnovers for Caitlin Clark early in her career. That's something that she's got to clean up a little bit. She's scoring more though. Um, she's got she's got five turnovers already. I think she had double digit turnovers the other night. Five still kind of a lot from, especially from a guard who's supposed to be ball down. Oh, shoot, which time do I do that? Would you say this 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 side right here, Gilo? I look at the picture of the box around the bottom left. So this, right? And then the top pack has the auto. And, and top pack, right? Because I flip these around, so it, the auto should be this top pack. But that's, it's always gonna be in that stack, okay. That's a good tip, though. If you wanna game the system a little bit. Gilo, if Ronnie entered the WME draft this year, where do you think he gets drafted? Would he get drafted? I mean, what's 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 the average height? You know, of of the women in a uh, in basketball. Well, I'm only come. On, I'm only getting team stats. Can I get player stats? Oh, there we go. There's player stats. I get Yeah, there probably really isn't a good answer to that question, but I mean, judging from his height, he's only like, what, 6'1", 6'2", or something like that? Anything else? No. Uh, Justin Verlander printing plate, non-auto. Gilo says hi. Hey, Gilo. If, if Bronny was... <laughs> If Ronnie went to the WNBA, where would he be drafted? I mean, I feel like at his height, he'd still be one of the taller players in the... Like, forwards are like 6'2 in the WNBA. You know, average... They, they're 6'2 and can't dunk. Right. You know, average centers are 6'4. Ronnie can play defense on any any center in the WNBA. Right, his wingspan is 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 that he he'd be big in the WNBA, too small for the NBA. He's like in a he's he's in a weird spot. That's why I think he should just play golf. I think so. You see Austin Reeves what? doing a doing Corn Ferry Tour qualifying today. Is he? Yeah. He's pretty good. He is. 
Uh, but apparently he's failed to qualify for a Corn Ferry Tour event. I think he's like a two handicap or something like that. It's off season, have fun with it. Is Bronny good at golf? There's Ramon Ramirez for the Royals. That's for Ed. 14, 15 points. She has like five turnovers, though. She had like double digit turnovers the other night. That's kind of an issue for her. She got teed up for yelling at a ref just a second ago. Really? Yeah. Um, so I think, who, who's the color commentator here? Rebecca Lobo or something like that? Um, I think she, it's, it was a thing where it was, it's not a foul in college, but it is a foul in the WNBA. Uh, and as the ref was walking by Kaylin Clark, she, she goes, it's not a foul. You can see her mouth saying that, and it's just like, beep. Caitlin Clark goes back in the locker room after this game when they're looking at film. Oh! She just ran into a wall. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know there was only 12 teams in the WNBA. It's not a lot. But yeah, coach will say, Caitlin, that is a foul in the W. So. Don't do that again. Did you see, uh, I feel like there was one game where, like, who was it? I don't know, someone just set a monster pick and Caitlin was not even looking and ran right into her and then got bounced, bounced right off. Oh, it happened again. Two beings who are not known for their leaping. <laughs> Kalen Clark leads the league in turnovers, seven per game, with three games played. There's Arjun Namula, mini diamonds, 143 to 150. This is Kalen Clark's welcome to the WNBA moments here. She's going to make a three to take the lead. Lombard Jr. In the span of three, women's, in the span of three, four months, women's basketball players from college. Yes, it's a very quick turnaround. Once they're drafted, watch they're just dumped in right away. We're Not enough women want to play basketball as a Port 30 team, says Rex. Not sure if that's true. And I think they're 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 expanding per, pretty often. <laughs> Kevin, don't let Rex waste your time. He's actually not new here. Now you've you've made Rex's day because now he's he thinks he's you know gotten a, gotten the LOLs. It's James Wood. But don't fall don't fall for his his idiocy.
Right, that, yeah, if you... So, uh, Gila, I don't know if your theory is correct, at least... At least not with the last couple boxes. Maybe we'll start with maybe a different case. Yeah, Rex loves being annoying. We love it. best part of your graduation 30 years you were annoying at your graduation it's a shocker to me was that the peak of, of, of life and it's just downhill from there Wow, you saw Rex in another stream on the other app and it felt a little out of place. Yeah, it's like you guys are like regulars at a bar or restaurant somewhere and then you see each other at a different place. And you're like, what are you guys doing there? Kevin has a theory for us. They used to have a little hauling of baseball stars on all the box and you experience the number on the sticker ended in an odd number at a better chance to hit, but now they don't have the stickers anymore. Maybe, maybe the secret was out. It hit about 90 degrees and then it's now it's gonna rain? It's gonna storm even? No, we we we're, we're actually I'm, I would I would welcome nineties. Here's an auto right here, John Weimer with the auto. Well, Gilo, as he should, outed you on this uh, in this stream. Thanks, Gilo. We know where we know where Gabe's loyalties lie. Jaspies has eyes everywhere. Right, it's like seeing a school teacher in public. I remember like in elementary school, seeing one of my elementary school teachers um, in a, uh, in Home Depot over the summer, working the Home Depot over the summer. And you know, I'm, I'm just a kid and I saw, I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, as a kid, Home Depot is amazing. Only, only later until I realized, I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, you're a school teacher. You probably do have to work that second job over the summer just to make ends meet. Yeah, but Gila was quick to be like, oh, it was gross being in that other stream. I hated those other guys. I hate myself for it. <laughs> I felt guilty. The pangs of guilt gave me a stomach ache all day. You know, but then he was just like, but Rex was having a grand old time there. You know, trying the same jokes on them. Getting the laughs, feeling appreciated. No.
We got we have we have higher standards here in, in our chat. <laughs> Henry Davis two fifty. I've heard of Maynards. Uh, Maynards or Menards? I usually see it on the who drives the 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 Maynards car in NASCAR. That's the only reason why I know it. And then I was just like, I think I asked Nick's dad, I was like, what's that? <laughs> and he's like, it's a hardware store. And I was like, oh, okay. Exactly, Kevin, yeah. So then I realized, oh. Looking back many years later, I was like, oh, maybe it wasn't that cool, thinking that it was cool. That, Mr. So-and-so like worked at the Home Depot in the summer. <laughs> Dumber Street. Menard and Menards? Is what it's called Menards. Gilo says some someone told you, you can buy groceries at Menards. More streams, fill your deepest streams, yeah. Those uh those 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 uh, breakers who are like the coastal elites. Those wise guys on the on those streams. They're not gonna fall fall for your uh fall for your tricks, Rex. So called jokes. It's one oh nine out of one twenty five. Aqua Shimmer. For, uh, that's Jodder Arya Namo for the brew crew. That's gonna go to Jeremy. But wait, you can. I guess it's like kind of. Is that confusing? I guess it's kind of confusing. I feel like, what's the what's the store in the Pacific Northwest? Fred Meyer, I think, that also kind of does that. I ha feel like I ha we well. First of all, I feel like we had. A couple regulars I haven't seen in a little bit, but a couple of uh, regulars who one of them used to manage a Fred Meyer, but that's also like a grocery store and a Target maybe, but without like clothing. Does that make sense? Something like that. There's a there's a Menards down the road from you, but you've never been there. Not Gilo, not Hansy, not Hansy. Fred Meyer's on my Kroger. I think that yeah, I think you're right. I think they are. So what what kind of place is Fred Meyer, Rex? It's not a. It's not a grocery. I've, my friends from the Pacific Northwest are like, ah, it's hard to explain. It's not a grocery store. So I was like, is like a Target? It's like, ah, not, not a Target. And now all the McDonald's. Oh, so, so, so they, so they are, so they were ripping us off. So you got you got to fill the pockets of the CEOs. But no, they'll, they'll, oh, it's it's rampant inflation. It's the cost of employees. Theft, widespread theft around America. But well, turns out they can lower prices. Hmm. Never been to a Fred Meyer. Uh, anyone in the Pacific Northwest want to speak to speak to Fred Meyer? Yeah, never. I've never been to a to a Maynard's or a Menards or however you pronounce it. Never been to one of those. I don't think we have those in. California. We have Ace, Lowe's, Home Depot. I feel like I feel like there's a lot more Home Depots than Aces. 
Or no, well, definitely a lot more Home Depots than Aces. Uh, more Home Depots than Lowe's. I feel like Lowe's is a pretty big hardware store brand. Oh, yeah. I feel like we've got a lot of... Um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of options. Obviously, LA is a large city, a lot of construction happening all the time, so there's always a lot, of, a lot more lumber yards and hardware, independent hardware stores and warehouses and stuff than you might think. There's Maui Ahuna to $3.99. Green paper for Jin and the Giants. Ooh, is that some red or is that just one of those two colors that always fool me? Oh, it's the two color ones that always fool me. There's Augustine Ramirez to one ninety nine for the Yankees. It's for Bill. It's a Midwest chain. Is that the go-to place? Or are you going to Home Depot? or Lowe's instead. I think hockey's coming up after this. Oilers at Canucks. George Lombard Jr., Brock Wilkin. So how many uh, strikeouts do you think Yamamoto will, uh, will have tonight? Were they playing the Dimebacks? Yeah. Mm, what's his average strikeout rate? Mm, just say it on the I say he strikes out five tonight. Damn you, Joe. You take the over? Over eight and a half. The, the line's over eight and a half? Six. Oh, okay, I was gonna say. There's Ryan Lasco. Lasco! 20 out of 150. Pulse Chad. Slide, it's with the like, uh, eight strikeouts. Zach Wheeler every time he pitches is like. Uh, eight and a half. Yeah, Paul Skeens can strike a guy out or two. If the Pirates have any kind of strikeout promo, Paul Skeens himself might be able to get that. Him and his teammate, Jared Jones. Um, what, uh, what is your baseball, what's your baseball team, ladies and gentlemen, and what is their, uh, their season's promo this year? Because, okay, so for example, the Dodgers, if the Dodgers strike out 10 or more players, it's a, Free Jumbo Jack from Jack in the Box with a drink purchase the next day at participating Southern California Jack in the Boxes. I've never taken advantage of that. I don't even know how that works. Do I just go, can I get a free Jumbo Jack with a drink? They'll either say yes or no. If they don't have that promo, then they might be like, who the, what the F are you talking about? Nothing's for free here. Oh, is it seven? I thought it was 10. There's Kyle Teal to $4.99. Nice, Red Sox, Bob with Boston. Paul, what's happening in September? If username Mike was drafted in the, this year's WNBA draft, where was where is he going? How many rounds are there? It used to be 10. And a large soda costs about as much as a Jumbo Jack. Well, maybe, uh, listen, maybe people will eat less fast food and drink less soda. 
and be uh, and be healthier. A miraculous save, even. There's a mini diamonds, Kyle Teal. Nice. We like seeing parallels of the uh, of the key player, the key prospects we're looking for. It used to be ten. There's Dylan Crew. We'll do that later. Royals used to do a Papa John's thing. Um, remember uh, Boban Marjanovic? He's with Dallas for a while. He played for the Clippers for a little bit, too. He's on Houston now. I think the last game of the season, the Clippers were playing the Rockets in a non... pretty much an inconsequential game. And there's a promo, apparently, inside uh, for the Clippers. And I think a lot of... a lot of different basketball arenas have this as well. If you... Um, if the road team... If a road player misses two free throws in a row, everyone gets a Chick-fil-A sandwich or something like that for free. Participating locations, blah, 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 blah. So this is towards the end of the game, and Boban was in the game. And he, was, he was getting free throws. He realized that there was this promo, and he intentionally missed them both. A man of the people. Nice, so Paul's going to Bama, Wisconsin in September, and Colts, Packers. Packers home open. Nice. Yeah, Lambo is definitely a place that I would like to go see a football game someday. All right, final case. Good luck. Yeah, we got we got to find something for you, Kevin. Is that is that what is it for the Cubs? Some Chick Fil A? Like, what has to happen for everyone to win some Chick Fil A? Oh, nice. Are you going to stay with your uh, former co-worker? It's always nice. Save a little bit on the lodging. Yeah, Boban's a goat for doing that, G-Lo. He's, he's a man of the people. I feel like he's a fan favorite every city he goes to, so... By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I know this is, we've got another hour and a half left in this break. Um, but while you're watching, you can vote in our, uh, our Twitter or X poll. I think that ends, it ends at some point tonight, maybe two or three hours from now, but uh, you can vote. Who do you think is going to win the Eastern Conference Final? We'll have a similar poll for the West tomorrow, but the Eastern Conference starts uh Tomorrow, so I want to get a get a bit of an idea tonight. What the people thought. I guess it's every home game. I get that, but like, what has to happen for for that Chick Fil A to unlock? Like for the Dodgers, like Kevin was saying, like. If Dodgers pitchers have seven or more strikeouts, then it, that triggers the promo. Like something, some event has to happen, I think. Some like action. Who am I rooting for in the playoffs? I don't know. I mean, now I don't, now I really don't know. I, I was just more for Jason. I was supporting the OKC Thunder. But now I don't know. 
root for the hobby, I suppose. Right? Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards on, on Minnesota. That's good for the hobby if they win it all. Luka Doncic, that'd be good for, for people who are collecting, holding, PCing Luka Doncic. If he wins it all, that'd be good for the hobby. There's Ronnie Hernandez to 499. Dylan Cruz. Yeah, uh, whatever's best for the hobby. What would be best for the hobby? Pa Pacers? Who do they have? I suppose, I suppose like Tyrese Halliburton's stock would go up if he has a nice Eastern Conference final and wins that. I don't know if they're going to win it, but. Rex is lagging a little bit. Oh, I think he might be lagging a little bit. No idea. I don't see anything. Someone wrote it on Reddit. Oh, it's every home win. I mean, that could be it too. Which would be... Yeah, I feel like that doesn't make sense though. It can't just be for wins. If it's win, sometimes I see, maybe for basketball, if like, if the Lakers win on the road then like you get a discount on Wingstop or something like that. There's Walker Jenkins going to the Twins, Jesse. This has to be tied to something. It's either strikeouts or, or home runs. You know, if a Cubs player hits a home run, then everyone gets, if there's two home runs in a game, you know, Cubs will get a, Cubs fans will get Chick-fil-A or local Chicago. Chicago area Chick fil A's. Oh, I see. Maybe maybe it might be a, a dollar amount off, Rex. Kevin's saying there's a $5 off CBK with any win. It's almost like just go to any restaurant and ask what their Dodger promo is. That's true. Oh, 30 seconds. Yeah, I was just like, I was like, is Rex just intentionally ignoring me? Maybe. Rex like, I'm gonna get my point across before Joe interrupts me. No, he was lagging instead. There's uh, Estuar Suero, 18 out of 150, blue shimmer. That will be for the Pirates. That's gonna go to Tristan and the Buckos. That's true, Gilo, yeah. Maybe maybe I thought he was just doing that. Ellie De La Cruz. Luis Baez for the Strohs. All of those will go to Evan. There's Yoshinobu. And there's our autograph. Luke Adams. Use the false, Luke. That's going to be for Jeremy Olsen and the Milwaukee Brewers. Second case. I I didn't do anything for May the fourth. 
Gabe. I uh, I wore a Star Wars t-shirt when I went to go get a haircut and some lunch. And I got some like, hey, Star Wars. <laughs> You're wearing the shirt. It's like, yeah. We're wearing the shirt. Star Wars Day, May the 4th. It's the shirt. One of these days I'll 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 do I'll do like Disneyland or something. When's May the 4th in 2025? Does that land on like a weekday? It'd be a great time to go to Disneyland. I think it's a Sunday in May 2025. That's, uh, that's going to be a lot of people. Too many kids with <laughs> like Disneyland's for kids, and I'm like, too many kids at Disneyland. It's a kids theme park. There's so many kids here. Sticky soda hands. What did Rex do for Star Wars Day? I don't know. Probably cried about why there's no why. How come there's no Star Trek Day? I guess you could argue that every day is Star Trek Day for Rex, though. Here's Davis and Gutierrez, 81 out of 150, Blue Ray Wave for the Mets. I Capola. More Kyle Teal. I feel like on May the 4th, Rex would, uh, would try to talk... <laughs> which would want to try to discuss like Star Trek movies on May the 4th and then will get mad at me that I don't want to discuss Star Trek movies with him on May the 4th. Ali De La Cruz. And there's the anime card for this case. This popped early in the last case, too. Julio Rodriguez. Seattle Mariners. That's Steve Kelly. Nice. Like I said, we'll do it. Ooh, look at that. Pirates. Who has the pirates? Tristan, wake up. Nice time to get this. An orange shimmer. Paul Skeen's autograph. 7 out of 25. That's awesome. Your first overall pick. Rated number four prospect overall by Baseball America. Obviously the, the organizational top prospect.
Not 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 as Bowman first. He was in draft, but not his first autograph and not a rookie autograph. So kind of in between, but nice low number, still nice. Good time to get this. Yeah, Paul, Paul Skeens made two starts, and somewhat interestingly, they were both against the Cubs. The first one was, was uh, in Pittsburgh, where he went four innings, gave up a few earned runs, a home run, a couple walks, seven strikeouts. And then, seeing the Cubs a second time, learned, his, learned some lessons, because he went six innings, gave up zero hits, zero earned runs, zero home runs, only one walk and 11 strikeouts, and got the win. That's kind of what you're looking for, I think, with with uh, with uh, you know young pitchers or rookie pitchers, where you're like, how's their first start? How you know like if they have a bad first start, how's you know how's their how do they bounce back? How's their second start? You know if that goes well, you know then you start looking at you know when you're seeing different. And you're on the road at home when you're facing a team for the second or third time. So you got a lot, lot of boxes you start to tick there. You know, then it's like then then what does it look like when you've pitched your you know, when you've pitched five starts, ten starts, fifteen starts. So there's some sort of rookie wall that might be there too. There's no LV Marte for the red, Sean Maddock. Start looking at all different different sorts of things like that. And kind of take take stock of how the entire season went. Try to keep building from there. <laughs> right, and get more Livy Dunn updates. All right. I realized that um, that she is not going to be on the Olympic team. I was like, wait a second. You know, she's she's an accomplished collegiate gymnast, and I was like, oh, right. Olympics this year. Obviously, she's going to be there, but I think due to some injury issues or something like that. I think she's not doing that because I think in addition to the collegiate season, I think you have to do all the others. Uh, do all the other competitions outside of the collegiate season. And I think she has a injury history where it would just not be, you know, beneficial her to do that. So I think she essentially said her Olympic dreams are over like a couple of years ago. Marlins beat the Brewers in the bottom. He did not expect that. I think the Brewers have been playing some better baseball the last week or so. so not, maybe not that surprising at the end of the day. You know, I think the Brewers, conversely, have not been playing better baseball in the last week or so. Got to pay attention to what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, Rex, not just by looking at their records. I know you're looking at the 16-33 and 33 Marlins playing the 27-20 and 20 Brewers, and you're like, oh. But you got to dig deeper than that. Olympic basketball will be fun. That, that's always fun. Are they doing baseball this year? Do they do Olympic baseball this year? I feel like they don't because you, you, you never get you never get everybody because they're playing baseball.
No baseball, okay. I thought they might get college guys out there, but I guess not. Um, that's why we have the World Baseball Classic, I guess. Are we are we fired up about the Olympics? What's the what's the timing like? Is what's Paris time like? Is that going to be a hassle? I think for even for the West Coast, I feel like time the time change should be okay. Are we excited about the Olympics? I feel like I'm not. I usually don't get excited about the Olympics <laughs> until it starts, and then you're kind of like, oh yeah, well, well of course we have to do. An Olympic, should we do an Olympics pool? No, I'll try to figure out, maybe we can do, should we do a, would people be interested in that? Just for fun? Just for the community, for bragging rights? Usually those pool, those Olympic pools are just like medal counts. I think there'll, there'll be some fun Olympic golf to watch. I'm dreading the Olympics here in LA in like 2028. Yeah, the Olympics are in uh, here in, the, in Los Angeles in 2028 and that's gonna be in four years. I don't know, I don't think we're ready for it, guys. I think there's supposed to be a lot of like sort of transportational changes that we have to deal with. I mean, I think they've been trying to, trying to open up some, uh, you know, trying to open up some uh, Better transportation to connect like metro lines to the people movers at LAX. So there'll be tens of thousands of people descending on here. There's JD Gonzalez for the Padres. That's going to go to Jonathan. Skateboarding BMX. I'll watch that. Some of the skateboarding ones are kind of cool because I think, I think they, I think one year they, was it like the one in Beijing or something like that? They actually created a whole like mini city where skateboarders can go through this course on a predetermined run or something like that. And so they would, they would be like, you know, doing tricks over like traditional style buildings and, and whatnot. I thought that was pretty neat. I don't know where they're doing all that. Right, yeah. I suppose as 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 things get I suppose we'll start figuring out the next soon where all these things are gonna be built out. LA's obviously very big, so So I don't know where all the events are gonna be, but they're they're gonna be kinda spread out. Brock Porter, five out of 25. That's Orange Shimmer. I feel like we've been seeing a lot more orange than usual. That's gonna to go to Texas. That'll be for Joe Lawson. Yeah, BMX is always fun to watch. So I guess the the majority of the LA venues are going to be scattered in clusters known as sports parks. Downtown, San Fernando Valley, Carson at Cal State, San, uh, where the uh, Galaxy play, and Long Beach. No permanent venues are being built specifically for the games. The Olympic Village will be situated at UCLA while USC will host members of the media. That's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's great public transportation in and out of UCLA. I mean, aside from a, an overtaxed bus system, but there's not like there's a, there's a metro where you can get there to the airport pretty quickly. I guess maybe it'll... T suppose, should I, should I be an Uber driver? 
for the month of the Olympics and tell you some stories. I suppose I can go to the UCLA campus and try to try to land a an, an athlete wife or something. There's Rafi Velasquez at two ninety nine. Interestingly enough, Velasquez, by the way, um, goes to Cleveland. That'll be for Kevin B. Um, the, the L.A. Coliseum where USC plays. Yeah, we got something, Kevin. L.A. Coliseum where USC plays and the Rose Bowl where UCLA plays will host athletics and most athletics and soccer. The LAFC Stadium will also host soccer and several events. SoFi will host Foot, will host football slash soccer and archery. It's kind of random. You you would think SoFi would be used for more, but I guess I guess there's a better track and field setup at the Coliseum. No, the Brewers haven't. I mean, but I think the the I feel like the Marlins have been pretty good, though. Better than their record reflects in like the last week or so. Don't slip, Rex. Riviera, the Riviera Country Club will host golf here in LA in 2028. Oh, the new Clippers Arena will probably have some some basketball too. They're gonna, I guess. Cr I didn't. Cricket's an Olympic sport. I guess it is. There's gonna be a a new cricket pitch in Orange County in the Irvine area. Hmm. And the opening and closing ceremonies will be. Will be, I guess, between Coliseum and SoFi. It seems like a cluster. I guess it'll be a torch relay. Maybe a. I guess I could try to get into finding the to finding some sort of torch. Find, seeing the torch run by. But yeah, I'm not sure if the public transportation infrastructure is going to be ready for that. We'll see. I'm, we may have to, uh, Jaspies may just uproot in 2028 and then, you know, settle somewhere else for a month. Should I, should I do the torch? I don't, I don't know. I, I could probably, could probably train for that. So I can put in a decent mile time where I'm while I'm doing the torch. How do you do the torch? What do you think the process is? I wonder where all the swimming events are gonna be in LA. I don't know, I'll think about that, but I'd I'd go watch. Uh, I got to work my forty time. I'd go watch uh, Olympic golf when it's here. I'm um, trying to look at the different Olympic events that are going to happen. Nice spotlight. I don't think we saw one in the first case, but here's a Wyatt Langford spotlight here in this case. I think they're about one, one and a half, every one and a half cases or something like that. It's Joe Lawson with the Rangers. Some of those can be numbered too. I 
There's an Aaron Judge to 499. Luis Baez. The judge will go to Bill and the Yankees. The Olympics in Paris officially start uh, July 26th and end in August on August 11th. The events this year, artistic swimming is what they're calling it. Some of you may know it as synchronized swimming. There's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. to 125. I don't think I'll be watching too much of that. Diving? I like watching diving. I'll watch a little diving. Yeah, someone mentioned that earlier. Dever is on fire. What's the record? Didn't Yerman Mercedes almost have the record with the White Sox? He started the season off with like, um, I don't know, 10 straight days with home runs or something crazy like that and then ended up getting demoted in the middle of a month after that so there's marathon swimming that's the first I've heard of this marathon swimming is an event I don't know if I'm going to be watching too much marathon swimming no I'll just get tired watching that. Proper swimming I'll watch. Water polo I traditionally do not watch. I'd watch archery, but I don't think they televise that a lot. Maybe if it's in LA, I'll go to an archery event. How much do you think that costs? You think it's free? <laughs> you think if they're, uh, if I wanna go archery, watch archery live, you think that's just free? They'll just let me walk right in? They'll just make me pay for parking and like expensive food and beverage, but they'll like, yeah, go watch it for free. Joe's saying that's a record for the Red Sox. Gilo, you're Hunger Games with a bow. You know, um, I uh, unintentionally stayed up too late last night because I was like, oh, I'll like, I'll watch... I'll watch uh, Hawkeye. I've never seen that show. So I'll be like, I'll watch Hawkeye an episode or two before I go to sleep. There's Abimelech Ortiz, 001 out of 125 for uh, Joe and the Rangers. I don't know if anyone's watched Hawkeye, but uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty entertaining. And then I ended up staying up too late. But that is a... Uh, that is a fun show featuring the bow and arrow. Um, I've uh, I've shot a bow with an arrow. Not a uh, just a regular old school bow. Not a not all not a bow with the fancy bells and whistles. And I feel like if I worked at it, I think, feel like I could be I could be okay at it. I feel like I could be a little more accurate with a uh, with a bow and an arrow to a target than I would a uh, a, a, a lob wedge to a green, <laughs> gab wedge to a green. Maybe I should change sports. But yeah, I'd I'd watch R three or R three archery. And then, uh, of course, you know, I think uh, Haley Stanfield, I think, is the female lead. She's easy on the eyes. Um, I think she's dating Josh Allen, quarterback Josh Allen, the actress in that, in Hawkeye. Both, right, both should not have bells and whistles. They, they'll scare away. Good call, Rex. 
When you're right, you're right. But, you know, there are, there are, is there such a thing called like metaphors? Rex will learn about that soon, someday. There's Riku Nishida for the uh, White Sox. That's going to be for Gary in the White Sox. Went to, went to college in Oregon. All right, another box. Yeah, wait, what's the documentary what Jennifer did? Yeah, Hawkeye's pretty good. I feel like I'm just c catching up on some of the old Marvel stuff that TV show-wise I didn't see. Yeah, I'm not, I feel like they're really, the idea of creating these different phases for the Marvel Universe and tying in movies with TV shows and other properties was a pretty good idea. But now I feel like, I don't know, I mean, I feel like the, the next phases I'm not super interested in, but, but maybe I'm just a little marveled out at this point. You know, because if you're looking at like, it just seems like a lot. Right, because I guess phase four, five, and six, it starts with Black Widow, which I, which was also really good, I thought. But then it includes like Shang-Chi, which I hear is pretty good, but I don't know if that moves a needle for for an entire phase, right? Eternals, Spider-Man No Way Home, I guess, is in there. Doctor Strange is okay, I guess. Thor, Black Panther, blah, blah, blah. Phase six, so, oh, that we've already seen those, but phase six is uh, the Fantastic Four followed by Blade and conclude with Avengers 5 and Avengers Secret Wars. But are those including original Avengers? No, because Iron Man is no longer with us, but then there's new, I mean, I don't know, I guess, this feels like a lot. They're, they're going to reboot... Yeah, I, I am upset about this, Rex. They're going to reboot King of the Hill. And they'll actually age the characters. So Bobby will be 21. Surely on some sort of streaming service, Rex. <laughs> Trying to get more eyeballs to a streaming service. They're not actually going to put it on network TV, are they? Oh, true crime dog is okay, but too obvious what was, was going to happen. Yeah. Should have been titled, duh, that's what Jennifer did. But I agree with you, G-Lo. Uh, it's just too much Marvel stuff. I think they're committed to releasing something like w once a year. I think that's what they, I think Star Wars slowed down a little bit. But they were, they were like committed to like releasing something every year and then just everything became too rushed. And now there's like the, another sequel to the sequel trilogy that's gonna, that's apparently has the whole go ahead. Which will be interesting to see how they go. But I'd rather see them go backwards and go, which I still think they're gonna do, but. Would have liked to see them do more of that. I don't know. Although the sequel to the recent se Star Wars sequels might end up being a good thing if they get the proper writers on board and uh, and sort of you know clean up some things that happened with the with the, the trilogy. Yeah, I am excited for for Acolyte. Yeah, I think the TV series have been have been pretty good. It's it's the feature films I feel like where they've where they stumbled a little bit. There's John Cruz to four ninety nine for the Yankees, and it'll be for uh, for Bill. 
All right, Joe, thank you for hanging out, man. Appreciate you getting in on it. Hopefully we'll have some nice things to, to mail you. We'll do a recap at the end of the break, so when you're looking at the video tomorrow morning, you can fast forward to the end. Ah, it's gonna be on Hulu, okay, that makes sense. I think I'll be watching a minute of that. You know, I still have to watch Tales of the Tales of the Republic. Here's another Paul Skeen, 009 at 250. Purple Ray Wave. Not auto, but still nice. Pairs with that autograph really nicely, Tristan. Braden Vradenberg to 150 blue shimmer that's going to go to Miami that'll be for Eric M could I watch Tales of the Jedi without having to watch the other animated series yeah yes you can I think probably make a little more sense but there's Douglas Glad for Joseph Cavanaugh and the Braves but I suppose some of those tales of the Jedi also are like kind of little shorts on backstories of some of the main characters in the animated series. So I think it could go either way. You could probably go into it watching those first or watching the other later. So it could be a good, um, a quick little uh, background into it. Yeah, I don't think it's critical, though. I think you could probably, if you haven't watched any of the animated series for Star Wars yet, you could probably watch Tales of the Jedi and Tales of the Empire. Watch both of those, watch the animated series, and then go back and watch those again. I think you would, you would probably like them even more. We should make Tales of the Jedi Crypt, Rex is saying. This is why Rex is not uh, not going to be any in any movie industry anytime soon. Let's see, I'm looking, I looked up the, the animated series. You know, I'll have to be honest with you. Animated series are, are really good, except for a couple, I think. Uh, Clone Wars is really good. It's a little, that, that's a little long. There's kind of a lot of episodes. You can probably find some sort of, you know, blog or something like that that'll tell you like what the essential Clone Wars episodes are. If you want to go through the whole thing, obviously they're just cartoons. There's 20 minutes an episode, but there are some episodes which you can probably skip. 
Um, Star Wars Rebels is really good. That was after the Clone Wars. Um, Resistance, I didn't watch too much of. That didn't really get me, nor did Star Wars Visions. But the Bad Batch is really good, although I, I still haven't... I keep starting it, and then I forget to continue it, and then I always go back to restart it. But the Bad Batch is pretty good. That final season has already happened this year. Um, yeah, so I think those are it for the animated series. I guess they're, they, they came out with Young Jedi Adventures, but I think that's more of a... For the Ninos, no? Yeah, I don't think that, I don't think, I think they're for, I guess these, these are all for kids, but I think the Young Jedi Adventures are even more for kids. Yeah, you know, I did too, Jeremy, for the long, and, and I enjoy watching animated stuff. For the long, for the longest time, I just, for I had a hard time just kind of getting into it. Um, but you should watch. So the first, I think, quote unquote, pilot or something like that, for um, for the Clone Wars series was actually a movie. That came out in 2008, I think. And it's about, about an hour and a half. But if you like the movie and if you're compelled by the characters, you know, and how they represent, you know, all, uh, all your classic characters in that, if you like that, then I think you're going to enjoy the, the series themselves. So at least give yourself, you know, spend... Spend an hour and a half with Star Wars one weekend, you know, carve out a little time and, and watch that. And if that does it for you, then I think you can embark on the journey of the animated series. And I think you'll enjoy it. And I think uh, most of those early, most of those uh, projects are like Dave Filoni projects. So I think there's a lot of tie-ins with the live action shows that we've been seeing lately. So not essential, but I think it just adds more more depth to more depth to uh, the stuff that's been going on now. I think Mandalorian season four is in pre-production. Um, that might be the last season, and then I think there's supposed to be a movie that ties everything together, which should tie Mandalorian and ah Ahsoka together. If I remember correctly, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's what they're gonna do. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, they might... I'm not sure what they're gonna do with that. I don't know if they're gonna do another season. I think Ewan McGregor wants to do something. But I wouldn't, I would be interested in seeing, I don't know if they'd ever do it, but. So the Andor series is supposed to dovetail into the beginning of Rogue One. And Andor series two should drop Sometime early next year or late this year. Um, so the idea is that that's going to dovetail into the beginning of Rogue One, which I think would be really cool. There's uh, Luke Adams. Use the false Luke. 48 out of 499. Appropriate. Brewers. That's going to be Jeremy Olson. I wonder if, if you could you could probably uh, right Obi Obi Wan Kenobi was an old man in the desert during the Andor series so I wonder if if there could be like a one off episode 
you know, if there could be a one-off episode that uh, that appears. With a little cameo from Obi-Wan Kenobi, a little, little side story there. There's Anthony Huezo to 199. Could do a whole series, too. There's still a lot of time between series, Obi-Wan Series 1 and Andor Series 1 as well. Kieran, what's going on? Are, we, are you doing football breaks now? We are. We are indeed. We broadcast until 11 o'clock Pacific, 2 a.m. Eastern. After this very long break that we're in the middle of, we'll... Uh, I'm going to take a dinner break and then we'll come back and we'll go through some more orders and see if people want to do football breaks now. But we're doing anything that you see on jazbeescasebreaks.com tonight. So get into the action, ladies and gentlemen. You can check out the break schedule that, that I just dropped in the chat. And if you want to, uh, if you want to participate in our Twitter poll, check it out. Who wins the Eastern Conference Final? That starts tomorrow. You can log in your vote there. Maybe give us a follow, at Jaspies Breaks on Twitter, or X as they call it. And Adalas Garcia will go to Joe Lawson. All right, gang. We are halfway through the final case. Got about another 30, 40 minutes to go. I think we're, I think we're on track timing-wise. Maybe I'm starting to drag a little bit. I feel like I'm coming up on, uh, you know, 85, 90 pitches in the pitch count. Kind of seeing the the order, the uh, the batting order for the third time. You know, they're, they're starting to foul off more pitches. You know, the runners are on base. You know, more more high intensity pitches. More high stress pitches happening here. No, this this is the game, Gilo, where the where the manager says, "Joe, I need we tax our bullpen last night. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need seven or eight out of you tonight. You know, I need uh, I need. If I'm like I'm like Justin Verlander. You know, there's like we're gonna need 120 pitches out of you today." Jeremy says, oh, thought there was talk of a Star Killer series. That would be interesting to see how that came about. I think there is that, that might be the next quote unquote phase of, of, uh, so the Acolyte is, is, is we're going back in time, about a hundred years before episode one. Phantom Menace, which I think looks really interesting. This uh, looks like a kind of a crime thriller. Skeleton Crew, I don't know when that, that's the same time frame as The Mandalorian. And the Mandalorian is about five years after the return of the Jedi. So there's still a space in time. Still a space that's just maybe 10 years before Force Awakens. Still going. Still going. Almost there. 
but like I feel like I'm laboring a little bit, you know? We've got like 95 pitches. I'm seeing the, seeing the lineup at a third time through the order, you know? What the hell is this? I'm not getting the fastball. That's a buyback autograph. How cool is that? It's to like 10. You know, they're starting to starting to hit some more off of me, you know? The, the breaking ball isn't as sharp. Start to leave some hanging in the zone. <laughs> but you know what? There was a bullpen game yesterday, so like the manager was like, "We you got to go 130 pitches today." So <laughs> grind it out. Every sci-fi show wants to do time travel at some point. I don't think that's something. No, that's something Star Wars has not touched upon. Well, they kind of have, actually, in the animated series. But it wasn't necessarily time travel, per se. It was, call it, time travel. But I guess more like Avengers y style time traveling and not not Back to the Future. It's a little more of a complex way of doing time travel, but they've already done that. I don't know if they haven't done it in the live action yet. I'm I'm not sure if they're intending to do that. But there is a space between, you know, the end of the Mandalorian and make like you know in like a five to ten year period before the force awakens where they could uh explore some of that area so maybe the construction of star killer base or something like that i think would be pretty interesting and that's also an opportunity for those shows to kind of clean up a little bit of the 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 frayed edges of of the sequel series that was Definitely mixed reviews. But I think the I think the television series that explored the before could work really well. Especially if they could tie it to the next trilogy series. So there's opportunities to really clean up some of the uh, some of the plot holes and stuff that happened in the sequel series. All right, David Guzman, Refractor. That's going to go to Tristan and the Blue Jays. I think the biggest problem with the sequel series, episode 7, 8, and 9, was I think they rushed it. I think they were... I think Disney got the Star Wars license, they immediately want to quickly pump some some, some stuff out, which I get. You know, they paid a lot of money for it, but, and I think J.J. Abrams is great, and then having him, and then Force Awakens, I think, is still, by itself, still a pretty standout movie, and there's just so much, you know, it, it was a little formulaic, they kind of, they kind of followed a new hope, but it, it works. They hit the right notes, you know, the pacing was good, everything was great, introduced some new fun characters and actors and stuff, and there was a lot of potential there, but what happened, what happened was, um, I think they should have had J.J. Abrams just do all three, no matter how long it takes. Here's Felix Morabell, but once other guys started getting on board, especially Ryan Johnson in the middle episode, Right, either they weren't communicating. I don't know what happened. There was just just maybe bad leadership. Who knows? But they just really weren't on the same page about the future tone of those of those movies. And so, and then you have J.J. Abrams coming back in the ninth episode, trying to trying to quote unquote fix it. And then you're just then you're just the message is lost, and you've lost the narrative tone of the entire thing. As opposed to say like how Kevin Feige shepherded a lot of the Marvel stuff. Yamamoto's check out the side. 
Did he really? Yeah. Oh, is that baseball game already on? As much as I want to watch Edmonton, Vancouver, I'm a little more interested in the Dodgers game. And Michael was saying that Yamamoto already struck out the side on our way to Jumbo Jacks. Why the sequel? Well, sequels happen. That's not why sequels happen. Sequels happen when uh, you can make money. <laughs> if you can make money, then they'll green light a sequel. You're not getting a sequel just so you can uh, fix plot holes from the first one. So let's not get that. Let's not. Let's not be naive about that. Talk to your talk. Jeremy's saying, sorry, he's talking about the video game. Oh, Force is Unleashed. Oh, I have no idea what that. I thought, I thought you were on the Star Wars train talking about Starkiller Base in, uh, in Episode 7. But Star Wars, though, is one of the few series where you can do kind of a crappy job and still make a ton of money and then still have the opportunity to, uh, still have the opportunity to, shoot, sorry, still have the opportunity to release more Star Wars content and that's where you have the luxury of trying to fix plot holes per se, but you know, every other movie you get that opportunity because you don't get you don't get a sequel in order to fix plot holes. I guess unless you're self financing it. Rick, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I was actually at a, a music festival in Los Angeles or in Pasadena, right next to the Rose Bowl. Um, on uh, on Saturday, last Saturday, it's called Just Like Heaven, and it was I thought I thought it was a pretty good lineup. I was primarily there to see uh, to see Postal Service, one of my favorites, and I've not I've never seen them live. So I got to see them, which was pretty amazing. Also on the uh, on the bill, I saw Phoenix, which I've seen a number of times. Passion Pit was really cool. Saw a little bit of the end of Death Cab for Cutie. The Two Door Cinema Club set was great. Saw saw some Fantagram. Saw some Metric. Saw a little bit of Washed Out. No, The Cure was not there. I've seen The Cure a couple times. Though. They're they're really good live. Saw a little bit of Washed Out. Would have liked to see a little bit of Tegan and Sarah, but I missed them. But I've seen them before, so it wasn't a priority. But yeah, got to knock out a... Uh, got to knock out a bunch of bands all at once. And it was, uh, it was a good time. Went with a group of friends. A lot of, lot of walking. A lot of uh, a lot of dancing. I got my steps in, which is really good. Here's a Brock Wilkin, Green Lunar for Jeremy and the Brewers. So Vader's hunting Jedi. Raising his child. Ooh, yeah. You know what? I don't know why they don't get some of those video game writers to to get in on some of the some of the movies for the. Uh, some of the feature films. I feel like I feel like Disney gets a little nervous about. I mean, they did. They. I mean, you know, they obviously want to make more money than necessarily be critically acclaimed. I think that's where they're letting the TV shows do that, like like Andor, which is which the producers of Andor had said this is like Star Wars for adults.
Aldous Hard. I'm not familiar with Aldous Harding. I'll have to, I'll have to check out Aldous Harding. got here Aiden Miller red yes four out of five Aiden Miller Bowman top 100s autograph that's for Darren and the fighting fills Darren all aboard the big hit express Woo -woo. this is the kind of boost I need in a break like this, in a long break like this, that's always good to see. Congrats, one of the top guys, one of the top guys we're chasing. So let's hope, let's hope he evolves into a proper big leaguer. Definitely want to see that. There's Everson Pereira, green paper to three ninety nine. That's for the Yankees. That'll go to Bill. Jacob Gonzalez, lunar to one twenty five. That'll go to the White Sox. That's going to go to Gary. Luis Baez, paper. Arjun. Dylan Cruz. Estuar Suero, 66 out of 150, Blue Ray Wave. Uh, there's Rising Inferno's George Lombard Jr. Some of those, sometimes those can be autographed too. Walker Jenkins, that's for the Twins. That'll go to Jesse. Got a purple paper, Ramon uh, Landeada, 109 out of 250 for the A's. That's going to be for Chad. Another box. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. I think uh, all but three games are finals. So Padres won the first game of a doubleheader in Atlanta, six to five. Blue Jays beat the White Sox nine to three. And Cleveland Guardians beat the Mets three to one. Uh, Braves won the second game of the doubleheader. They shot out the Padres 3-0. Chris Sale with another great start. Red Sox fans must hate him. Uh, in extras, Marlins walked off the Brewers 3-2. Uh, 
Uh, Nationals beat the Twins 12 to three. Luis Garcia with a two-run homer. Red Sox shut out the Rays 5-0. Devers hitting a home run in the sixth straight game for the Red Sox, which I think Joe Lawson mentioned was a Red Sox record. Maybe does anyone know offhand or want to look it up? The, the Major League record for home runs in a row. Mariners uh, beat the Yankees 5-4 in New York. And uh, Gilo's Royals beat the Tigers 8-3 in Kansas City. I know, right, this break's so long, some of these guys might be called up already. It would be cool if like Junior Caminero got called up today, or like right now. And then we could be like, man, when we started the break, Gina Cameron was still in AAA, Durham. Now he's in the majors. He got the call up. A couple games close to wrapping up. The Orioles are in St. Louis. Their uh, Cardinals are up 6-3. It's a bird on bird battle here. And the Angels are in Houston. They're up 9-6. So those games are almost wrapping up, and then um, my Dodgers are hosting the Diamondbacks. Just bottom of the second. Scoreless, each team has a hit, and uh, no errors on either side. All right, good luck. Almost there. This guy's on the mound tonight for the Dodgers. And there's a Mason win, orange, 17 out of 25. Cardinals, that's going to be for Bob and the Redbirds. Carson Roccaforte, 140 out of 150 for the Royals. That'll be for Ed P. Blue, little color match there on that parallel. There's Arjun. There's a Jackson Merrill, Lava, 99 out of 399. Jonathan with the Padres, the Friars.
And there's Esmil Valencia for the Strohs. That's going to go to Evan. All right, almost there. Three boxes to go. I've looked it up. The uh, the home run streak is there's multiple people that are tied at eight home runs. So that's Ken Griffey Jr. in 1993, Don Mattingly 1987, Dale Long for the Pirates back in 1956. Those are uh, those are your your players with. Eight home runs in a row, consecutive uh, consecutive days with a home run. No one's had more than eight. Devers has six, seven straight games. Trout did it in 2022. Joey Votto did it in 2021. Kendris Morales for the Blue Jays in 2018. Kevin Mench in 2006, remember him? Barry Bonds in 2004, Jim Tomei in 2002. So not a lot with seven. Surprising a lot with six straight games. Devers did it, Goldschmidt, Matt Carpenter, Giancarlo Stan, Daniel Murphy, Nolan Arenado, Chris Davis, Carlos Pena, Frank Thomas, Jason Bay, remember Jason Bay? Morgan Ensberg, Travis Hafner, Jose Cruz, Barry Bonds a couple times with six straight, two different times in 2001. Mark McGuire, Greg, uh, Greg Nettles for the Padres in 1984. McGuire was 1998 with the Cardinals. Reggie Jackson in 76. Frank Howard in 68. Willie Mays in 65. Maris in 61. Roy Sivers in 1957, Willie Mays in 55, Walker Cooper in 47, Gehrig in 31, George High Pockets Kelly for the New York Baseball Giants in 1924, and then Ken Williams in 1922. So a lot more than I thought had six in a row. And then the number drops, not too many with seven in a row, not too many with eight. Consecutive games with a home run. Is High Pockets also your nickname? Are High Pockets back in? I think uh, seeing a lot more, uh, a lot more '90s fashion reappear these days. More uh, wider leg jeans, higher waists, so forth.
Sheila, you don't like high waist jeans. For yourself or, or, or as a just fashion statement in general? At the music festival that I was at last uh, last Saturday, a lot, a lot of the kids wearing a lot of high waisted jeans. A lot, a lot of the girls wearing high waist jeans. A lot of people wearing all black as well. That seemed to be a fashion trend. 136 out of 175, Noel B. Marte for the Reds, Sean Maddock. It's like a mechanism to hide your style. I guess in a way it is. You know, maybe elongates the profile a little bit. I mean, Gilo, of course, is uh, is is swole. He's got a uh, he's got a six. He's working a six pack. There's no reason for him to wear a high waisted jean. You know, he doesn't he doesn't have to hide his stomach. Doesn't want to. Doesn't need to. George Lombard Jr., Lunar. It's going to be for the Yankees. That's for Bill. Bryce Matthews to 125, Dylan Cruz. Bryce Matthews going to Houston. That'll be for Evan. Cards are a little more slippery than I feel like they usually are. There's an Elijah Green to 299, 146 out of 299 for Sean and the Nationals. Got a good crop of youngsters coming up the ranks. James Wood might get called up soon. I think he's been raking in the minors. And there's the auto, George Swolkow. 82 out of 250. Swole. I'm not kidding, this guy's, this guy's 6'7", 239. You could probably add more to this frame. Get real swole. The swole cow. For the White Sox, Gary with the White Sox. And he, the, I love the honey man as well. He's all about the honeys. Two boxes left. This is box 23 of 24. Almost there. This is definitely taking longer than I expected. But what time is it? It's 7.45, I'm gonna probably get this done in about 20 minutes. Probably take me another 10, 15 minutes to get uh, put this break to bed. There's a lot of post-production in this. And then I'll take a, a little dinner break 
a late dinner, much later than I usually take one, but I had a large breakfast slash lunch. So we'll probably have another break ready to go by nine o'clock Pacific. We're already in the fourth quarter of the show. We'll see what other stuff. I do see a handful of orders coming in. But this three, three and a half hour break kind of gobbles up a big chunk of that uh, middle of our, our day. But we're getting there. Feel free to, if you go to jazbeescasebreaks.com, feel free to get your pre-orders in for uh, TC, Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary. Eating at any new restaurants or I'm a creature of habit. Um, I don't eat at restaurants a lot. I've been trying to make food from home a lot. But if I if I do end up going to like a restaurant on like a weekend or something like that, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll try to I'll try a different place much as possible. There's a new barbecue place that opened up near my place not too long ago. This person is, at least in town, is a pretty, uh, pretty famous barbecuer, originally from Texas or something like that. But, um, but yeah, I've been there a couple times. I need to try out some other items on that barbecue list soon. There's a lot of great restaurants down in the down in our neck of the woods, South Bay area. Yeah, go for it, Rex. What's the what's the trivia? Always appreciate a little trivia, especially in a longer break like this. It's more Paul Skeens, and that's numbered fifty out of fifty. Nice. You've been loading up on red. <laughs> have you really? Gosh, I have. I haven't set foot inside a Red Lobster in. I don't. I don't even remember. Not in my adult life, I don't think. I do remember the biscuits being good, though. Apparently, they lost. Uh, I was reading this last week. Apparently they lost like millions of dollars in their all-you-can-eat shrimp promotion, like their, sort of their last gasp effort to try to get people in the door. But that might have been the final nail in the coffin. Here's Nick Lofton, 9 out of 75. Yellow paper for the Royals, Ed P. Oh, there's a box biscuit mix you can buy at the store, Gilo, so... Don't worry, you don't have to load up on them. Yeah, what a bunch of idiots we are, Gilo. Here we are, investing in all this uh, 2024 Bowman baseball, and here you are ahead of the curve, you know, loading up on a Loading up on, uh, on, on Red Lobster biscuits before they go out of business. Gilo says he sucks at cooking though, Rex. I feel like you can put together a biscuit mix, Gilo. It's not too difficult. If you if you can if you can make a mac and cheese, I feel like you can 
a box mac and cheese, I feel like you can make a make a biscuit mix. Oh, sorry, Rex. I, I did see it. How many sets of twins have reached MLB? How many of the sets played for the same team? Three. Three is the answer, obviously. That's an easy one, Rex. Come on, man. This guy's on the mound right now. Oh, he's not on the mound right now, but he's in the game. Jeremy suggests Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Here's Robert Collaz, the 299 Speckle. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's Rex. It's not three. I, I, have, I can't even name one of the sets. Oh, that's a, that, that's what they call it, Cheddar Bay Biscuits? That's what Jeremy's saying. I do remember those being pretty good. There were 10 sets of twins, and all, and four of them ended, uh, have played together on the same team. Oh, Jose and Ozzy, because I didn't realize they were... I knew they were brothers. I didn't realize they were twins. Okay, I remember those guys. There's Kyle Harrison, 99 out of 150. Autograph for my rivals, the Giants. Jin with the Giants. I think, uh, I think the, uh, the Korean center fielder, I think Jung Hoo Lee, I think he end, in, ended up with separating his shoulder and I think he's out for the rest of the season. And I think the weekend news, which sucks. I feel like he was having a nice, a nice year. All right, the 24th and final box. Good luck, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for making this happen. Appreciate you. I will be taking a, a little bit of a break after this, maybe a slightly longer one than I usually take. But there's the break schedule. We'll see when we'll be back in action. In the meantime, you can vote on our poll. Uh, who's going to win the Eastern Conference Finals? Who's going to advance to the NBA Finals from the East? About a little under an hour left in that poll. Uh, feel free to vote. Tell your friends to vote, your family members, coworkers, enemies. Tell them to vote in the Jaspi poll. At Jaspi's Breaks on, Insta uh, in on Instagram, yes as well as Twitter. Follow us there too. So far, 61% are saying the Celtics are gonna, are gonna win the East. They are heavily favored, but there are some Pacers fans who believe out there. Point of the season, I do you feel the dogs are pretty set? Do they need to make considering the trade deadline? I think they're pretty set. I mean, I think I think the only way they make a major deal is if 
if one falls in their lap or if uh, or if uh, you know a key player gets injured but no I think they're pretty set I mean, I think, I guess like any team would probably want better middle relief. But I mean, that's not a, a huge priority for the Dodgers. I suppose the Dodgers would love to get more production out of the 7, 8, 9 part of the order. But I think Dodgers are amongst the top teams in offensive production. So that's not like that's a, really a big need as well. And they're getting Kershaw's throwing off a mound. You know, Walker Buehler seems to be rounding into form. Kershaw should be back mid-season. Dustin May should be back a little bit after Kershaw. Guys are getting healthy. There's Jared Dickey to 150, Ray Wave, Blue Ray Wave. Maybe the Dodgers would, I don't know if they'd do this, but I guess they could use better defense at third. I feel like they've always been kicking the tires on like Nolan Arenado. So he might be a replacement at third base. I don't know, offensively, I think he's been struggling a little bit this season, but that glove is still there. If we're going to do the rest of the season. No, I mean, I don't think the Dodgers have to worry about the season in general. <laughs> There's Gladys of the Diamond, Philine Celestine. More Dylan Cruz. And there's Capri Ortiz, 40 out of 99. That grass parallel. Yeah, like I mentioned before, Rex, I mean, the Dodgers aren't really, few fans really care about the regular season these days. Uh, that's Last Bob Mojo, Joe Lawson. Yeah, I, I, Jeremy, he's right. Who are the other set of twins, Rex? At least the ones that play for the same team. Give us that. You got to pay that off. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do, try to do the trivia for us, you gotta, you gotta finish, you gotta finish it. Yeah, but I mean, Lord of the Brave series doesn't matter. Philly series doesn't matter in July. You know, those, those are all postseason bound teams anyway. <laughs> no, Gilo just lost a match in FIFA because a guy flopped. Is there like a. How does that. It, are you playing another person? Or are you just playing the computer, I guess? You think there you think there's a flop button that someone can press to flop? Is there a flop button? Oh right, yeah, I guess Taylor and Trevor Rogers were on the Giants together. Jose and Ozzy. Eddie and Johnny O'Brien in 1953. I don't remember those guys. And Joe and Red Shannon in 1915.
There's Celestine again. That's 15 out of 15. Nice low number there. 5 out of 15. I think he's supposed to be one of their, their top prospects. Steve Kelly with the Mariners. Was the second best international free agent in 2023. Seventh best in the Mariners farm system. And that Gladiators uh, insert I think is a short print as well. Ooh, Kiki Hernandez home run. The eighth hitter, speaking of production from that 789 spot. He's playing online, Gilo says. Unbelievable. Wait, so they flopped and they got the penalty? They flopped in the box, got the penalty. It's the worst. One more Ellie Della Cruz. And that, my friends, is that. We are done. We made it. Three hours, 12 minutes, seven seconds and counting. Big thanks to everybody who got into the action. Appreciate you. Here is a recap of the top loaded cards. A bunch of uh, parallels that we've sleeved up as well. They'll be top loaded and also all the other stuff will be top loaded as well. Here's the first box or the first case that is. Some nice stuff there. Love the orange. The pink Otani was cool. Justin Verlander printing plate. This was awesome. The uh, buyback, the two out of 18 Ryan Sandberg. It's the first one I've seen of those. And the anime was Henry Davis for the Pirates. I feel like the second case was even better. <laughs> GR7, nice. So we've got the Paul Skeens to 50, the Swole Cow, Mason Wind 25, the out of five Aiden Miller Bowman Top 100 autograph. That was pretty awesome. Brock Wilkin, Paul Skeens to 250. And the Paul Skeen 7 out of 25 Orange Shimmer, the Julio Rodriguez anime. We started off with Use the Force Loop. There you go, gang. That was 2024 Bowman Baseball Hobby Edition. Double header, 24 boxes, dual case break, pick a team five. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next Bowman break. Bye-bye.